Hi, welcome to Author Spotlight. My name is Lucy, and this is the program on AADL TV, where I take some time each episode to highlight the works of one author. The author that I am going to be talking about today is Victor Laval. Victor Laval has written a short story collection, five novels, two novellas, and two comic books. He's the creator and writer of those. There are other illustrators for those. And his novel, The Changeling, has recently been adapted and turned into a TV show. He's also the recipient of numerous awards, including the World Fantasy Award, the British Fantasy Award, the Bram Stoker Award, the Whiting Writers Award, a Guggenheim Fellowship, the Shirley Jackson Award, American Book Award, and the Key to Southeast Queens. I came to Victor Laval through reading his most recent book, which was published in 2023 called Lone Women. And I was so taken in by this book. It's sort of a historical Western with a mysterious element. It's incredibly well-written and it's full of historical detail, but then there's this horrible part to it. Victor Laval is known for writing horror, but I would describe Lone Women first and foremost as this historical Western with some horrible, terrifying elements, one in particular. I am going to talk about Lone Women at length a little bit later in this video. I wanted to back up a little bit and tell you about some of the things I read after I read Lone Women and I thought I wanna read more by this author. I noticed when I was reading Victor Laval's work that he approaches horror in a way where it might be set within a different genre, like a well-known fairy tale that's been subverted. There's one example where he takes another author's work and sort of subverts that and he uses horror to shine a spotlight on the truth. And in the end, even though his books do have horror and they get gory, they're graphic, uh, they are also indicative of a kind of optimism that can appear in horror because you can beat a monster sometimes. One of the novellas that Victor Laval wrote is called The Ballad of Black Tom. And he wrote this in 2016, and it was a corrective for H.P. Lovecraft's story, The Horror at Red Hook. So it's a criticism of H.P. Lovecraft, but in some ways also a tribute. The dedication of the book reads to H.P. Lovecraft with all my conflicted feelings. And Victor Laval grew up reading horror, and he had a very early introduction to H.P. Lovecraft and to Stephen King. I listened to numerous interviews with him where he talked about this, and he said that it was only later that he realized that H.P. Lovecraft is, in fact, extremely xenophobic, racist, and misogynistic. So he took one of H.P. Lovecraft's most xenophobic stories, The Horror at Red Hook, and this was sort of his jumping off point to write The Ballad of Black Tom. And he does have characters that are in Lovecraft story. There's these two police officers who are white men and they sort of center in Lovecraft's story, but they're definitely not the heroes of The Ballad of Black Tom. The Ballad of Black Tom is a novella. It starts out with Charles Thomas Tester. He is a black man living in Harlem in 1924, and he is a small time hustler. He disguises himself as a musician. He carries around an empty guitar case, but he never is actually playing the guitar. He lives at home with his father, Otis, and Otis is the only person who calls him Charles. Everyone else calls him Tommy Tester. This is what he's known as out on the street. And Tommy's job is essentially that he acquires things for a price. He will go get one thing for somebody that maybe has questionable details surrounding it and delivers it to another person. In this book, he is bringing a book to a woman named Ma At, and he didn't touch the book when he got it. He looked at it. He had his father take out the last page of the book, but he didn't touch it. He put his guitar case and he goes to deliver it. And he travels down to Brooklyn to deliver this. And a lot of the story does take place in Brooklyn. Tommy Tester gets involved with a very wealthy man named Robert Sudam, who is also one of Lovecraft's characters. And Sudam is working on calling forth these ancient gods. And one of the detectives, Detective Malone, is assisting Sudam in calling forth these ancient gods. And in doing that, they invoke 
uh, sort of monster. I don't want to give a lot away about the story because it is very short and it is action packed. It's really good. The writing is so great. And it's a very strong story about New York, about the area of Red Hook, about life in New York as a black person. That's what Tommy Tester shows us. And that's a subversion of the original story, which centered on white people. It also shows the immigrant life in Red Hook. It's interesting because H.P. Lovecraft lived in Red Hook for a year and really hated all immigrants. And that's sort of where his story came from. So Victor Laval has in a way reclaimed it and, and recalled that story in a way that pays homage to the people who live in Red Hook and that centers on this black man, Tommy Tester, who later becomes Black Tom. And in that way that horror can mirror the truth, you start to realize that the real monster in this book might not be the monster as it's described, this fantasy being, but really the racism that was exposed through this story. The next book that I read by Victor Laval is called The Changeling. This was written in 2017. And this is a subversion of a very traditional fairy tale, the changeling fairy tale in which fairies steal human babies and replace it with something else, usually a creepy fairy child. And this has been told in many different ways in different cultures. So Laval takes this story and he retells it and expands it and changes who it centers on a little bit. It starts out as the story of a man named Apollo Cagua and his wife, Emma Valentine. And at the beginning of the book, they have a baby. And Apollo is really the main caretaker for the baby. And the book, in a lot of ways, is focused on his emotional journey as becoming a father, a young father. And Emma starts to act odd as soon as the baby's born and she keeps saying it's not a baby it's not a baby and apollo assumes that something's wrong it's it's postpartum depression it's postpartum psychosis and so he just keeps making sure that he's with the baby and he's taking care of the baby in listening to an interview with victor Laval, he was talking about how he approached this story from that point of view of a, a father and what that would look like. When traditionally in fairy tales, it's often the mother who is the, the main point of care. And he also wanted to show how sometimes you meet the perfect girl and you get married and it is not happily ever after. So everyone is telling Emma she's crazy. And Apollo is trying to make up for having an absent father himself, really throwing himself into this. He is constantly posting pictures of his baby on Facebook. And this is a really interesting part of the story to bring social media into it because there is so much info out there that he's putting out there. And then there, there's this idea that what if someone who has malicious intent, like a monster, gets a hold of all this information that you've volunteered, you've put it out there in the world. And so it turns out that these really aren't babies and maybe there is more to the story than there's this changeling aspect. You find out who is stealing babies and where that story came from, where those people came from. And there's a race component in this. And there's also this power dynamic in gender because women play a very crucial role in this book. They look like they're people who are acting in this horrible way and enacting these very gruesome events. But in fact, they are wielding a certain power that only they can have. Sort of like witches. It makes it seem like women are going to be the villains, but they are really not. And it respects the intelligence and the insight and the power of women. And that's something that Apollo eventually has to see as well. So Apollo, is, though he's the main character in this book, is not really the hero of this book. It's really the women that are the hero. It is a very complicated story. It goes on all these little paths to sort of get to what is in fact happening with Apollo's baby and with other babies. Things you think that are gonna happen, things you assume are gonna happen because you think this is just another retelling of this fairy tale become much more complex. And in the way that The Ballad of Black Tom really centers on parts of New York, this book is very much a New York story. Apollo travels all over New York, even to this sort of underworld of New York, to this abandoned island. It's this gritty, dark New York where 
monsters actually exist. And it's not this wonderful fairy tale land, but this kind of chilling place. And in this book, the parts that are horrible are being used to shine a light again on colonization, on oppression, on awareness of racial and gender dynamics. And those are things that come through as the story is revealed. And so it asks that question again of what is a monster? Who is in fact the monster? And why does the monster monster, the monster that looks like a monster and acts like a monster exist? What's its role? Why is it there? A theme that the Changeling brings up is the idea of monstrosities in family. And one of the reasons that Victor Laval wrote horror in the first place is that he grew up in a household with lots of mental illness. And he was always reading because that was sort of one way to escape, that you wouldn't be bothered maybe if you were hiding behind this book, but also that the only genre that he could find that really matched the unpredictability of his home was horror. And that's the thing about the horror in both of the books I've talked about thus far is you as a reader don't know what's gonna happen and what the monsters are gonna do. They're not jumping out in the traditional way. So Lone Women, which was written in 2023, is about a woman named Adelaide Henry and the book takes place in 1915 and she is a homesteader. So the book starts with her leaving a community in California. It's an all black community where she lived with her parents. And at the very beginning of the book, she is leaving a gruesome, gory scene. She's covered in blood. Both of her parents are dead. And all she takes with her is this steamer trunk that she won't let anybody open. She is going to Montana because at this time, plots of land were being offered to anyone who would come out there and take them. Victor Laval's history in this book is true. It's factual. He researched it very carefully. He said that he read like, all these newspapers from that time. So it's filled with these little details too. But one of the things, one of the reasons he wrote this book is that he was surprised in learning about homesteaders in Montana, how some of them were women, single women. Married women couldn't own homes, but women who were not married or women who were widowed could have land. So Adelaide also encounters other women. And what he was also surprised to learn was that some of these women were black women and some of these women were Latina women. There were no Chinese women that owned homes because of the Chinese Exclusion Act. The deal with homesteading is if she can farm this land for three years, then it's hers to keep. The winters in Montana are pretty harsh. The people are friendly in this small town that she ends up in, but they also have these kind of hard edges. And that sort of sense of desolation and like coldness, again, creates the atmosphere of this. the rest of the story. The way it's gonna unfold, it doesn't seem like the American West as you might imagine it. So. This steamer trunk goes with her everywhere. Everyone's curious about what's in it. And she doesn't tell anyone, but you learn pretty early on that there is, her sister is in the trunk and her sister was born in this monstrous form. And for some reason, the Henrys chose to keep this burden, this family burden and this family secret rather than get rid of it. And family features very prominently in this book and in the Changeling and even a little in the Ballad of Black Tom, but this idea that like, why does a family take on some burdens and when is a burden actually a gift? Part of why Adelaide leaves is she thinks she's escaping this, this family burden. She's leaving her family behind. There is no family left, but she realizes that she that is part of who she is. And though it is literally in this book, a steamer trunk, that's also sort of symbolic for like, carrying this baggage with you? What do you bring with you? Some of the things I loved about this book were the other people that she meets in this small town. She becomes very close to another woman who lives near to her, who lives with her son near to her. She befriends a Chinese woman and uh, another black woman who are a couple. It's just full of really interesting people. You also start to realize that something that looks like a monster might actually be protecting some people, might be there for a purpose, and maybe the monster is really that mob of white people who want to 
get rid of some of the homesteaders and find a reason for doing that. In an interview that I listened to with Victor Laval, he, he was asked the question, what drew you to monsters? Why are there these monsters in your books? And he said that one meaning of the word monster is this message from the divine. And so what messages are these monsters bringing in this book? What is their purpose? What is their role? They aren't there just randomly to scare you. If you want to read a book that's just going to scare you, you can read it like that and you can get that from his book. But you can also receive some greater commentary about people and family and society, but these books are not issue driven. And so this idea that a monster might be a message for a person or a message for a town or a message for a thing is is very interesting when you start to look at what that message is and who that message is for. And is it the same message for everybody? It's hard to go too deeply into the monster in this book without giving away big parts of the plot. But it's interesting to read this book knowing that the author did not make up anything in this book except for this big thing that he did make up, the monster. But everything else really came from a newspaper or a book or things that he researched and learned about the time period. And that is one of the things that drew me to this book. I also think his writing is amazing. He writes these really strong characters. The descriptions, the place descriptions are very evocative and the places are so central to these stories. I did read one of his graphic novels called Eve and this book focuses very much on place on the actual earth. It is a book that tackles questions about climate change. And the main character, Eve, has been living in a virtual world. And bits of her existence in her life are revealed to you throughout the story. But she is sent out into the real world for some reason. And she has been given this guardian, this virtual assistant, this bodyguard that is in the form of her favorite teddy bear because her father created that and he wanted to create something that was familiar to her and something that would bring comfort. So her father has sent her out to traverse a lot of land to try and navigate this quest, really, and to be a hero and and a savior. This book also approaches family in a really interesting way. It looks at the ways that kids are lied to, that adults and parents will lie to children in essence to say that they're protecting them and and to feel maybe like they're protecting them but in fact that how those lies can be really harmful and Eve has to learn what is the truth and who she can trust and that maybe everything she learned in this virtual world from her father is not right and it's also not going to help her in figuring out how to be the hero that she needs to be so she's dealing with this guilt she loves her father she feels bad thinking this but she has to survive and she has to basically accomplish what she needs to accomplish it's a comic that was written in five volumes but but now it's in one short book and I really enjoyed reading it it was different than the other things that I read of Victor Laval but as you can see from all the books that I talked about, though there are these common themes and ideas that run throughout the stories he tells, all the stories are very different, very uniquely different in history, in the historical time period, in the location, in the characters at the story center. So I look forward to reading more of what he's written, and I recommend that you pick up something by Victor Lavelle. Thank you for joining me.